Process of Factoring, Part 2, Trinomials. So we need to know how to factor these trinomials. We see it's a trinomial because it has three terms. Tri stands for three. And we also recognize this as that quadratic structure. Now a simple trinomial will have an a equal to one, which means there's a one sitting out front here, or there's really no number sitting there at all. A rule is going to be, we want to try to find two numbers that add to the middle number and multiply it to the last number. So let's try a few examples here. Factor the quadratic x squared plus 5x plus 6. This is a simple trinomial. So I know I'm going to put my two brackets down because I know from FOIL when I have the product of two binomials I end up back at this structure. So I know I'm, I'm heading here anyway. So I'm just going to put the brackets down right away. Now what I just want, want to try to find are two numbers that add to the middle, add to 5, and multiply to 6, multiply to the last. I think the best way to do that is to start thinking of what numbers multiply to 6. So I know 1 times 6 multiplies to 6, but 1 plus 6 obviously doesn't give me 5. I know 3 times 2 equals 6, and I know 3 plus 2 equals 5. So I know then 3 times 2, <clears throat> 3 times 2 will be my numbers. I put them into the brackets and I have my two binomials. And that's it. Now I can check my answer using FOIL just to make sure. So if I have x plus 2 times x plus 3, I do first, outside, inside, last, and then I add my two middle terms together, my 3x and my 2x, and that gives me the 5x. If I take a look, I'm back to the x squared plus 5x plus 6, which is what I started with. So it's this process that goes back and forth. If I have this trinomial, I can factor it. If I FOIL the factored version, I go back to the same trinomial. So I can always check and see if I'm right with FOIL. Let's try this one. x squared plus 7x plus 5, 12. Find two numbers that add to 7 and multiply to 12. Well, uh, multiply to 12, I could do 12 and 1. They don't add to 7. I could do 6 and 2. They don't add to 7. I could do 4 and 3. Yes, those numbers add to 7. So I know my bracket would be x plus 3 and x plus 4. And it doesn't matter which one you put first. It's the same answer anyway. How about this one? x squared plus 1x plus 2. I have to add to 1 and multiply to negative 2. I only have a couple of options here, right? If it has to multiply to negative 2, it's got to be 2 and 1. That's it. So I know I'm going to have 2 and 1 in my bracket. Because I have a positive 1, I'm going to have positive 2 and negative 1. Because positive 2 and negative 1 adds to my positive 1. How about this one? x squared minus 2x minus 15. Okay, what multiplies to get 15? Uh, 15 and 1, no. Uh, 5 and 3, yes, they're separated by 2, so I know those two numbers are going to work. My brackets go down, and I have a negative 3 and a plus, sorry, a negative 5 and a plus 3. I, I chose a negative there because I want negative 3, sorry, negative 5 plus 3 to equal my negative 2, and that's the negative 2 I have sitting in the middle x squared plus 4x plus 3. Okay, what multiplies to give me 3? Uh, 1 and 3. And yeah, they actually add 4 as well. So that one's pretty quick. 1 and 3. Uh, question here, we see this is not simple right off the bat. There's a number sitting over here up front, so we can't go to it right away. What we have to do is common factor first. So I'm going to common factor because 3 divides into that, 3 divides into that, and 3 divides into that. So I'm going to pull the 3 up front first. And then with my trinomial that's left in the bracket, I'm going to factor. I want to try to find two numbers that add to 1 and multiply to negative 6. I throw my brackets down. That would be negative 2 and positive 3. And don't forget, you still have to have that 3 sitting up front right there. This one here, we have the y's at the end of these two terms. That's okay. When I put my brackets down, I just put y's into the end of the brackets to make sure I get the y's with the final answer. Again, two numbers that add, they have to add to the middle. 
and you have to multiply to the last. Well, 15 and 1 won't work, but 5 and 3 will give me my 2. So that's going to be a negative 5 and a positive 3 because I want them to add to negative 2. Now, if I have a complex trinomial, that means the number out front is not 1, and I can't factor it out. So when I see a complex trinomial, we're going to use what's called the method of decomposition. And the rule for this is we need to find two numbers that add to the middle and multiply to the first times the last. And then we common factor twice. Let's try a few examples. So here's my trinomial. It's complex because this is not a one over here. This is a number. So I can't just put my two brackets down. So my strategy is what's well, called complex. I need to try to find two numbers that add to my middle, which is negative one, but multiply to the first times the last, to the six times negative two. Six times negative two is negative 12. That's what I'm trying to find. Two numbers that add to negative one and multiply to negative 12. When I think of those numbers, they are negative four and positive three. So what I do then, and this is where the word decomposition comes from, I have this negative one X here. I have basically decomposed or pulled that apart and rewritten negative one as negative four and positive three, which is negative one. If I take negative four and add three, it is negative one. I've just written it uh, this way so I can get, my, get through my factoring, okay? So once I'm at this stage, I'm just gonna common factor the first two and then common factor the second two. So for the first two, a common factor, two is the biggest number, and there's an x in both of them, so I pull a two x out front, and I say, what am I left with? Three x minus two, because I know two x times three x, six x squared, two x times negative two, negative four x. And this one over here on the right-hand side, I have a three x and a minus two. Well, one is always a common factor. So I'm gonna pull a one out front, and of course, you know, one times three x, and then one times negative two gives me that expression. And now I notice, as before, I actually have a binomial that's a common factor. So I can pull that binomial out front, and then I can say, well, what do I have to have in my bracket here? Well, I had to have that binomial times 2x, which is that, and that binomial times the 1, which is that. So that's my final answer there. Let's try this one. Again, 3x squared plus 5x plus 2. I see it's complex because that's not a one. So I need to find two numbers that add to the middle, which is five, but multiply to three times two, which is six. So add to five, multiply to six. Those numbers are three and two. So what they, I then do is I take this and I decompose my five X into three X and two X, which it is three X plus two X is five X. I've just written it this way. And then now I common factor the first two, common factor is three X, and I common factor the second two, common factor is two. And again, you're gonna know you've done it right because these two binomials are always gonna be the same thing. Okay, that's what you're looking for. You wanna make sure these two things are common because if they are, then we can take the X plus one and write it out front. And we're left with just the three X and the two that go into the bracket at the end. Okay, that's it.